We are back in the word. We've been tackling six truths. No matter how you try to twist it, flip it, it's going to come out to be the truth. And we already tackled the virgin birth. We tackled how Jesus is not God. We tackled yesterday how Jesus was not crucified. Now we're going to tackle the fact that Jesus is not king. Now, God speaks in the third person sometimes. And when he speaks in the third person, it's always in a supreme position, a supreme role. Let's start off by going to the Lord's Prayer. This is going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 10 through 13. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. So God, when he speaks in the third person, it's never going to be in a role like that. That is a role for the son of man because sons repent. God does not repent. God is supreme. OK, when God speaks supreme, he says, I am your Lord. You're never going to hear God asking for forgiveness. You're never going to have God asking to lead him not into temptation. God don't talk like that. Now we got to understand that God is king. He reigns over all. Yahweh, you reign. Yahweh, he is king and he reigns over all. Yahweh, he is king. Somebody get that for me. That's going to be Psalms 95 and 3. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 95, verse 3. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Above all gods, he is a great king. Now we want to go through the scriptures and find how many references we have on Jesus, either being prince, king, or governor. Let's start off with Matthew 2, 6. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 6. And thou, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Okay, this is referring to Jesus. And that scripture originates from Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. So in this scripture, he is titled what? Governor. Governor. So now let's go to... A top-heavy scripture. Revelation 19, 16. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 16. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, how can Jesus be Lord of Lords? How can he be Lord of God? How can he be King of God? So we see that this scripture is very top-heavy. If anything, God is King of Kings and God Almighty is Lord of Lords. Now let's get that in Revelations 1 5. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, 
unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Okay, so it will be a disrespect to God to call him a prince. Do y'all know that? Yes. Yeah. What are princes? Sons of the kings. So it would be very disrespectful to call God Almighty a prince. So if you're saying Jesus is God, but you're also calling Jesus prince, that right there don't make no sense at all. Because God is king. He is king. God is never associated with being a prince. Okay? So that's why when we look at these three scriptures, we see that Revelations 19, 16 is very top heavy. And that title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, only sounds correct to go to God Almighty. Now, governor, we can deal with that title with Jesus, okay? Prince, we maybe can deal with that title for Jesus. But Lord of Lords and King of Kings is very top heavy. And you can't have both. You can't be calling Jesus God, but also calling Jesus Prince. That doesn't make no sense. So now we want to go to a verse in scripture where the children of Israel first asked for a king. Does anybody know if it was a good thing or a bad thing for the children of Israel to ask for a king? A bad thing. It was a bad thing. Because Israel was prince. Israel means prince with God. That's where they were supposed to stay. The moment they asked for a king was the moment they rejected God. Notice the other nations had kings because the other nations had no God. And so therefore when they asked for a king, they did in fact reject the one and only true God. So now let's get that in 1 Samuel 8 and 5. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 8, verse 5, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel, when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. All right, so when they asked for a king, Samuel, who is a type and shadow of the mule, of the donkey, of the Gentile messenger. Even he was displeased with a man being a king. He was displeased with a prince being a king because he had enough knowledge and understanding to know that right there was a rejection to the Most High being king. Now let's keep going in verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Okay, so when they asked for a king, they rejected God. All right, so now we want to keep going. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods. So they do also unto thee. So what did they do? They started serving other gods when they asked for a king. And he's letting you know the track record of Israel. They always been worshiping other gods, even though they had the one true God. So when they asked for a king, they went from worshiping the one and only true God to worshiping other little g gods. Let's keep going. This is the book of Samuel chapter 10 verse 18. And said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all the kingdoms, and of them that oppressed you. And ye have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversities and your tribulations, and ye have said unto him. Okay, so how did they reject God? How did they reject God? They asked for a king. That's right. And if you keep reading, it's going to give you the answer. Matter of fact. A hundred percent correct. If you don't know. When the children of Israel asked for a king, they rejected God. All right. That's enough. That's enough applause. That's enough. All right. But yeah, when they rejected God. It's when they ask for a king. Let's keep going. Nay, but say king over us. But what? But set a king over us. 
Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. Okay, so they rejected the one and only true God. Now you all have a head start because most of the most common Bible teachers of the day, some of the most so-called glorified best teachers of the world today do not even get this. Okay, this is a very elementary, basic part of the scriptures to know that when Israel asked for a king is when they rejected God. Okay, so y'all ought to give yourselves applause on that because y'all are doing good. All praises to the Most High. So now we're going to go into the stipulations for you and the king that you set up over you. The book of Samuel is when kings began, okay? And God was very dissatisfied with the children of Israel asking for a king. And that's why the first king was a complete disaster. All right, let's go. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 12. And when ye saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us, when the Lord your God was your king. Now therefore, behold, the king whom ye have chosen, and whom ye have desired, and behold, the Lord has set a king over you. All right, so does anybody know who this king is? Saul. So. All right. Y'all is on point. Y'all is on point. Does anybody know? That's enough applause. That's enough applause. Does anybody know what was the first king of Israel doing? Before he was elected king. Donkeys. That's right. He was looking for a donkey. You see how amazing God is? This man was looking for a lost donkey. He was looking for a lost donkey. Let's get that real quick. This is in 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 1. Let's see that. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 1. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bechorath, the son of Aphiah, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. A mighty man. Israel was the mighty. I keep telling you. King Saul is a type and shadow of the nation of Israel. He was a head taller than all the other men of Israel. This represents how Israel was high above all the nations. The most powerful nation in the world was the nation of Israel. And that's why you'll know that Israel is the cause of all the nations. The world's blasphemy, the blame, and that charge is laid upon Israel. Israel. We are the cause of all the nations blaspheming God right now this day. Now let's keep going in verse 2. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward he was higher than any of the people. This man was the most handsome. This man was taller. Okay. This man represents perfection. Israel was perfection, okay? We was in charge of all the nations of the earth, okay? So the only reason why Edom was allowed to revolt from under our hand is because we forsook the Lord God, the real true king of Israel. All right, now keep going. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. Okay, here go that donkey again. <laughs> you was, I know you wish you was, and this smell like, yeah, that's right, and this smell like, 
yeah, that's right You gon' have to swallow all them words, boo -wee. I know you wish you was, I know you wish you was And this smell like, yeah, that's right And this smell like, yeah, that's right You gon' have to swallow all them words, boo -wee. Now you sound like a jackass Always thinking that it's all about your black ass Who put the words in the mouth for the jackass? Who put the words in the mouth for the jackass? That donkey is in the midst of Israel, okay? Now let's keep going. And Kish said to Saul his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise, go seek the asses. Okay, so this man, this young man, was assigned to go and look for a lost donkey. For lost donkeys, okay? He was not even that responsible. He had to have a servant go with him to look for the donkeys, okay? And this is when he was nominated king, and it wasn't necessarily people's choice because they picked him, but it was people's choice because they asked for a king. So now we want to get back to where we was originally at. And this is going to be 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14. If ye will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. Okay, so the king is not exempt from keeping the commandments. He has to keep the commandments, okay? They are both under this law, okay? The king doesn't get away with it. Now let's keep going. But if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, as it was against your fathers. Keep going. Now therefore stand and see this a great thing, which the Lord will do before your eyes. Okay, so now you understand that both the king and the people is connected to this. All right? If one breaks it, they all break it. If the leaders of Israel go astray, the people are all going to suffer the same punishment. That's why when a prophet came on the scene and he said, you are going to Babylon, he was speaking to the entire nation of Israel. Just like when Jesus came on the scene and he said, the kingdom is going to be taken from you. He was speaking to the entire nation of Israel, both the leader and both the sheep. Let's keep going. Is it not wheat harvest today? I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain. Thunder and rain. It was a very sad day. It was as if God and the angels were crying when the children of Israel rejected the one and only true God who delivered them out of Egypt when they were being oppressed, okay? He destroyed kings for their sake, okay? He did all these things for the nation of Israel, and yet they literally flipped him off when they asked to have a king. So let's keep going. That ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great. Your wickedness is what? Is great. Israel is not little angels. Their wickedness was small, right? Is great. Their wickedness is what? Is great. All right. Which ye have done in the sight of the Lord, and asking you a king. So what was the wickedness they done? I'm sorry, I got to keep going over this so that people can get it. What was the wickedness, the great wickedness that they did? They asked for a king. They asked for a king, okay? So now let's keep going. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And it rained that day, I told you. There was a lot of crying. Keep going. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not. For we have added unto all our sins this evil, to ask us a king. Okay, so asking for a king was putting the cherry on top, all right? The people was really feeling like they was finna die, okay? People don't go over this. Do you hear people go over this? No. Do y'all hear other Israelite camps bringing out how wicked it was for the children of Israel to ask for a king? No. Do you hear Israelites constantly bringing out Christ the king, Christ the king, Christ the king? Yes. They even call one another king. What up, king? Go clean the bathroom. What up, king? 
What up, king? Here's your little kitty plate, okay? They don't even treat you like a king. And they don't even know how wicked it is for the children of Israel to ask for a king. Let's keep going. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all this wickedness, yet turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. So God still gave them mercy. Keep going. And turn ye not aside, for then shall ye go after vain things, which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. Keep going. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. Keep going. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. Let's keep going. This is the good and right way right here. Let's go. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he had done for you. All right. So now he's telling you this is your last chance. Y'all need to fear the Lord, okay? And this king needs to execute judgment. He needs to make sure all the people that's playing games is out, okay? Because now they are held to a higher standard since they wanted a king. But let's keep going. But if ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. So when the children of Israel broke that covenant, guess who both was going to get it? The king and the people okay this went for the big people this went for the little people they all was going to get it if they broke that commandment all right so now let's see how the nation of israel failed because the first king was only king for a couple chapters only for a couple chapters it was a complete disaster let's get that this is the book of first samuel chapter 15 verse 26 and samuel said unto saul I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. He was already kicked out. He was rejected. He was rejected, okay? He was on an assignment to kill off the Amalekites, okay? To kill off the Edomites that these people hate so much, okay? These Israelite camps, we hate Edom so much, okay? Here we have an Israelite given an opportunity to kill off the Amalekites, and he fails, he leaves the man alive, okay? The real prophet had to come through and conquer the Byzantine Empire. The nation of Ishmael had to come through and conquer the Byzantine Empire. The nation of Ishmael had to come through and kick them out of Edom, okay? This was a job that the black man that identifies himself as an Israelite has failed, all right? So now the kingdom is being taken from the nation of Israel, just like it has been in the future. Let's keep going. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. Okay, them twelve tribes was rent. It was rent. It was stripped. Now keep going. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. Where's your double meetings now? Where's your Job 11.6 double meanings? Huh, huh, it's huh. Oh, the kingdom is given back to Israel. Where's your double meaning now? i tell you the double meaning. The double meaning is that the kingdom was taken from the Israelites and given to a Gentile heathen nation, which lines up perfectly with Matthew 21, 43. Trip me out. Now you don't have no Job 11.6 double meanings, okay? And God gave it to you plainly when he said the kingdom is going to your neighbor. Someone who is better than you, okay? Because Israel has been guilty of killing other nations that is more righteous than they. All right? Let's get that in 29. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man. God is not a man. God is not Jesus, okay? God is not your bishop. God is not your captain. God is not a man. Let's keep going. That he should repent. He ain't going to change his mind. He took the kingdom from Israel and gave it to a fruitful nation, okay? Israel was commanded to bear fruit and fail, and then God says, your children shall not be fruitful. He said, I will reject you from being priests, and he said, I will forget your children. Since you rejected the law of the Lord, I also will reject you. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. For a lack of knowledge. All right, let's keep going. 
Now we're going to move on to how Jesus never once in the entire Bible called himself a king. Let's get scriptures where God called himself a king. This is going to be Isaiah 43, 15. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 15. I am the Lord, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. Okay, so real gods, real kings can call themselves kings. And God called himself not only God, he called himself king. And guess what else he called himself? He called himself the creator because he is the creator. Now let's get another scripture where David calls himself king. This is going to be Psalms 1850. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 50. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and sheweth mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. All right, so now let's get a more accurate verse of David calling himself king. And you can't deny this when this is going to be 2 Samuel 3.39. This is the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 39. And I am this day weak, though anointed king. That's all I need. He said, I am weak. Today, but I am anointed king. This is stuff that kings do. Kings kill, okay? We have no record of Jesus killing anybody, okay? Kings kill. Now we want to go to the scripture where Jesus literally says that he came to bear witness of the truth. This is going to be John 18, 37. This is the book of John, chapter 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that okay, I am Okay, he said, Thou sayest. He said, Thou sayest. That's what you say. All right, keep going. Thou sayest that I am king. To this end was I born. Okay, so what she's about to say after is the most important thing. Let's keep going. And for this cause came I into the world. That I should bear witness unto the truth. That I should what? Bear witness unto the truth. That's the reason why he came in. To bear witness unto the truth. That's all I need right there. Now we're going to go to when they tried to make Jesus king. And he literally ran and hid in a mountain. This is going to be the book of John chapter 6 verse 13. That's the book of John chapter 6 15. This is the book of John, chapter 6, verse 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again. And he did what? He departed again into a mountain himself alone. He ran from that, okay? He was not coming to be a king, okay? Many of you, your Bible knowledge is very poor. It is sickening. It can make somebody sick. When you can't find one scripture in the entire Bible where Jesus calls himself king. And when they tried to make him king, he literally ran into a mountain. Okay? And we have record of this. This is all through the scriptures. Do you not know that in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John... They all agree that when Pilate asked him if he was a king, Jesus said in all four gospel accounts, thou sayest. He said, thou sayest. Now let's get a scripture in the book of Daniel. How the other nations recognized that our God was king of kings and Lord of lords. That title is God's title. This is the book of Daniel 247. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 47. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods. He is a what? Your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Okay, so that title, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, that is God's title. God is almighty, okay? Besides God, there is no God. Besides God, there is no king. He is the king and the creator. Let's get that again. That's going to be in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 15. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 15. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Okay, so God is telling you that He is the Lord, okay? That He is the King, that He is the Creator. Now let's get that scripture. And this is going to be the fate of Christians and all those who identify themselves as Israelites in these Israelite camps. 
when they call Jesus Lord. Let's see what Jesus had to say. When they literally called him Lord, Lord. Let's see what Jesus had to say. This is going to be in the book of Matthew. This wasn't in my notes, but this popped up, okay? This is going to be Matthew 721. Let's start at 721. This is the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Okay, Lord, Lord. Calling him God is a big no-no. There's not one scripture in the entirety of the Bible, okay, where Jesus literally says, I am God, worship me. All right. That's where you in error at. That's where you are in error. Read that again from the top. Verse 21. Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Okay. Skip down to 23. Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them. I never knew you. I never knew you. Okay, you just associated me with the most high God, calling me God, calling me Lord, calling me Lord. I don't know you. Okay, he is not going to bring the wrath of God upon him for you calling him Lord. All right, now read that again and start from verse 23 from the top. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You are working iniquity because you are exalting the son above the father. If God is the father, where is his honor? If he is the creator, where is his honor? Okay. You coming in God's house every day. Okay. And all you want to do is visit his sons. Okay. You don't want to have anything to do with the owner of the house. And that's the father. Now, when we pick back up, we will be dealing with topic six. Unstoppable truths, I'm telling you, we is bringing it out. We're going to be dealing with all nations being saved according to the Bible. And we're going to come with scriptures from Jesus' mouth, okay? So let's get in these scripts, shall we? We shall.